Last time I was here, we talked about, it oh, feels like a million years ago now, um, we talked about kind of an introduction to generative AI, how it might change education, and how we can start using it today. Can you put your hand up if you were here at the last Let's Assemble? I know you were here, John. Be weird if you weren't. Right, okay. I'm going to try and move it on a bit further because I, it's interesting. I, was, I did a keynote in Newcastle this morning. Um, I thought that was somebody heckling Newcastle there. <laughs> like someone blowing a raspberry. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's completely put me off. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> oh, right, so where was I? I'll start from the top. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> uh, no, seriously, I don't know where I was. Um, so, yeah, I was in Newcastle, that's where I was. I was in Newcastle this morning. And, uh... <laughs> Has anyone got any oil? <laughs> I was in Newcastle and um, I do this thing. In fact, I was going to do it. Let's, let's just jump straight to it. I did it last time I was here, just trying to gauge where people are at. And I, and I tend to use uh, ChatGPT because it's the one that kind of kicked everything off last year, isn't it? It's the one that is on the news a lot. I'm just trying to gauge where everybody is. And in fact, let's do it. So number one, survival, you've, you might have used it once or twice. Uh, you, you're a bit scared of it. Number two, you're mastering it. You're getting to know how it works. Number three, it's actually making an impact on your daily professional life. Number four, you're innovating with it, whatever that means. Be completely honest with me. Put your hand up if you're at number four. Number three. Number two. Number one. It's interesting, isn't it? Like when I when I was talking to Newcastle this morning, like most people put their hand up for number one. I know technology sometimes takes a while to, to reach up north, but uh, I, I was I was still like, really surprised. You shouldn't be laughing at that. Come on, <laughs> um, I was really really surprised, uh, and it just goes to show like how how long it takes for, for innovation to to kind of to filter through and and for these tools to 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 get to people, never just people in general, never mind educators. Um, I've completely gone off course, so I'm gonna go right back to the start. This is Morgan Freeman talking about artificial intelligence. What is your perception of reality? Is it the ability to capture, process, and make sense of the information our senses receive? If you can see, hear, taste, or smell something, does that make it real? Or is it simply the ability to feel? I would like to welcome you to the era of synthetic reality. Now, what do you see? So he explains it as being in the era of synthetic reality. And he says, now what do you see? What does he mean by that, do you think? Now what do you see? Don't trust what you see, yeah? Anybody else? You see what you want to see? Anybody else? I am not Morgan Freeman. And yes. what you see is not real. Well, at least in contemporary terms, it is not. What if I were to tell you that I am not even a human being? Would you believe me? Yeah, it's a deep fake of, of Morgan Freeman. Where it... We're now in a new world, like, like it or not, we're in that world. It's been kind of bubbling away um, for the last 10, yeah, 10, 13 years. And now we've got the products where any one of us can, can enter that world and, and discover the power of it, okay? What does that mean we need to do? So back in January when I first started doing a lot of training on AI, it's it's shiny new toy, isn't it? Look what it can do. Look what it, how it can help educators, and we still need a lot of that. But now we're starting to get leaders. We're starting to get um, education leaders going. Well, what, how do we prepare for this? What do we do? Okay, and I'm a big believer that strategy is about leadership in the future. If we want to be leaders tomorrow, if we want to be leaders in ten years' time, then we need to strategize. We can't just let it happen to us. There needs to be intent. And if the only constant has changed, then to earn that leadership in the future, the system's got to adapt. 
And last time I shared this with you, it's, it's Vijay Govindarajan's three box solution to innovation. And I love it. And businesses all around the world use it. And essentially what it is is, if, as a recap, box one is what you're doing already. Okay, so when you go into school, you go into college, you go into universities, it's the systems you've got in place, the timetable, the, the type of staff that you employ. It's what you're doing to get the successes that you've got now, or the successes that you're trying to get. This strategy says, what are we doing about what's coming? Do we give ourselves the space? Now, I'm going to say three things that are really, really difficult in education at the moment. Money, time, staff. But do we dedicate any of that to box three thinking? To go and listen to the weak signals of what's coming down the line. And this is not just technology. I work, I'm working a lot with independent schools at the minute because they've got the staff, the resources, the money to start looking into artificial intelligence. And they, I mean, they've got some, some legislation that's going to be coming down the line uh, if Labour get in power, which, which is going to massively disrupt them. So it's not just technology. It's just what's coming that's going to disrupt us. We haven't spent any time in there, I'd argue. Not as a system. Individuals have. Some amazing schools have. But as a system that wants to survive, we haven't really shown much intent of box three thinking. By the way, box two is just what are the values that got us to box one that's gonna, that we need to give up in order to get to box three? I'm going to skip through this just for time. Last time I was here, we talked about the different types of artificial intelligence, generative AI, and how ChatGPT is text to text. You put text in, you get text out, but there's so much more. I just want to kind of show you how this is progressing since I was last here. Because this is completely out of date now. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of tools out there that are using generative AI. A lot of them are, are crap. They're naff. They're not, they're not very good. Okay. Um, one of the things that we've done is we've compiled a list of tools that educators can use. So if you want to have a look at that, it's, uh, if you scan that QR code, and it's a way that we've tried to, to, go to, ed, to say to educators and leaders, look, here's some tools that we've tried and tested. We're not saying we've done due diligence in terms of um, data privacy and all of that, but what we do is we put quick links to, to those pages on their websites for, for you guys to do that. But there's some cool tools on there, and it just helps to cut through all of the different tools that are, that are being brought out. Anyone recognize this image? Yes, no? Uh, so a few newspapers ran with this. There's a funny story a few months ago. Uh, completely fabricated, made with a tool called Midjourney. Uh, that picture doesn't even do it justice. It, 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 the original's in 8K. It's a, it's a phenomenal photo, ultra realistic. Midjourney, there's a new version of it just released the other day, version 5.2 which is even more phenomenal. Anyone recognize these? <laughs> as much as we'd like these to be true, unfortunately they're not, but these came out when the rumors started circulating that Donald Trump was gonna be arrested. Obviously a certain faction in America got very upset by this. Very uh, photorealistic images. Where's this going? We're starting to get glimpses, I think, of where this could go. It's quite scary, by the way. An image generator, when, it, when they're getting it trained, essentially, it takes, a, it takes quite a bit of human input at the start. So they have to, so if you're, if you're training your AI to know what a cat is, for example, you have to show it loads and loads of pictures of a cat. Okay, tens and tens of thousands of pictures of cats. Here's a cat, here's a cat, here's a cat. And it starts working out the probability of, a, of what the image is going to, if it's going to be a cat or not, judging by the colours of the pixels. And, and the more you give it, the more accurate it is. Eventually, you can go, here's, here's a picture, is it a cat? 
and it can tell you whether it's a cat or not. You can do that with your students, by the way. There's a great tool called uh, Teachable Machine, which Google created a few years ago. And you can, you can do exactly what I've just explained uh, with your students using that tool. University in Japan, Osaka University, they got some participants. And they got them to look at some stock images, just random stock images, thousands and thousands and thousands of them. As they were looking at those images, they were taking MRI scans of their brains. Okay? The MRI scan changes slightly based on the shapes you're looking at, based on the colors, your emotions to the pictures, and so on. Eventually, they trained it up so much based on these individuals that they were able to then say, think of an image, just think of an image. They measured, they, they did the MRI scan, give it to the AI, and the AI was able to recreate what they were thinking. The image at the top is what they were thinking, the image at the bottom is what the AI came out with. Okay? It's not 100% accurate, but this is the direction we're going in. You can literally read minds if it's trained in the right way. Okay? So a lot of it, a lot of what we're seeing is very kind of shiny new toy, but it's serious stuff we're using here. And the implications for education are huge. Why do we need nonlinear innovation? I think it's for these three main reasons. You might have your own reasons as well. But for me, it's we need to prepare our students for their future careers. We need to equip educators with the best tools. And we need to stay relevant as an educational provider. That third one's interesting because we've never had to do that before. Unless you're in the independent sector and you've got another independent school close by, never really had to focus on that but there's competition coming big competition Com competition from private schools online private schools affordable education from private companies i was talking to gerd leonard the the futurist from switzerland fantastic writer a few months ago and he said that he thinks probably the next google the next big big company is gonna be a private educational provider. What do we do when we've done no box three thinking, we're stuck in box one, because we haven't got the resources, and the competition is knocking on the door? What do we do then? Two thirds of occupations could be partially automated by AI. AI is, I mean, this is conservative, is gonna replace 300 million jobs, IKEA, just got rid of 300,000 call center workers because AI can do it. Um, amazingly, they're retraining them. They're not letting any of them go. They're retraining them to be virtual, um, virtual, uh, what do you call it? Interior designers, virtual interior designers. Uh, Dropbox has just laid off 500 people. This is the start. This is the start. But it's nothing new. In this Goldman Sachs report, they said, they use uh, the work of David Orter, who said that 60% of today's workers are employed in occupations that didn't exist in 1940. Okay, this has been happening for a long time, for hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay, but it's going to speed up. We're going to see it go really fast. We're also going to see lots of new jobs pop up. Go back 23 years, the big internet companies created amazing new jobs that we, we just assume has been around forever. And also a lot of jobs went. We're going to see it go faster. We need to equip educators with the best tools. Things like ChatGPT to write your questions, ChatGPT to mark exams, ChatGPT to create lesson plans. It's all there. It's very, it's very accessible right now. Um, shameless plug for the book, but there's a whole chapter on there. In fact, there's two chapters on how to write a really good prompt with then over 40 different templates for you to, to take away and, and start doing this right now. Woolsey. Last time I was here, I uh, 
I showed a video, so myself and some history teachers created a video. We got ChatGPT to be Henry VIII, all right? We said, right, you're Henry VIII, uh, speak with his knowledge and, and how he would speak. We then used three other AI tools to give it, give it a voice, uh, give it an image, use a mid-journey, and get, uh, animate it, bring it all together and animate it. Um, this is what we came up with. Um, and still everywhere I go, people think that I based this image on me. I really did Woolsey, that Cardinal of York, was a trusted advisor and servant to me for many years. He served as Lord Chancellor and was instrumental in the administration of my kingdom. Three weeks ago, I went back to the same tools. Okay, this is two and a half months later. I went back to the same tools. I put the same prompts in. Um, did exactly everything the same as I did, did back then. And this is what it came out with. Woolsey. Woolsey's primary duty was to serve me, his king, and yet he did not accomplish what I demanded of him. As thou mayest know, I did seek to annul my marriage to Catherine of Aragon, for she did not bear... The progress in two and a half months is phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. We're seeing tools now that you type in a few prompts, you ask it for what type of image you want, and it will create a 360 degree immersive world. You can put a headset on and go into there. All we've done here is, uh, with some English teachers, has created uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, the Finch household. We used, similar to Henry VIII, we then embedded using a tool called ThingLink. Um, this is all AI generated. You can't hear it, but on the original there's, there's sound. Um, so it's Scout talking, introducing the students to who she is, who her family are. Um, students are able to look around within that world. They're able to see who Jem is, her brother. Completely all AI generated. They're then able to go through to the next scene, which is the courthouse. And then they're introduced to the other characters. So, by the way, this was done in about half an hour. My old job, we were commissioning companies to create similar VR spaces and we would, pay, we would have paid about £15,000 for this. Teacher with no technical skills, just the ability to log into a few websites can do this now in half an hour. The last one, staying relevant as an educational provider. For decades, the education system has sidestepped, has demonstrated remarkable agility in sidestepping non-linear innovation. We've stayed in box one. Look, how many of us have been in ed tech for, for years now, thinking it's going to be the next, it's going to be the thing that transforms education? It doesn't. Because as educators, as teachers, as leaders, we're really good at going, we'll have that bit because it supports what we're already doing. We'll have that bit because it makes what we're already doing a bit faster. As long as it can fit into box one, we'll have it. For the first time, and who knows when, there's going to be some real competition. I haven't got time to show you this, but you go to Synthesis. Synthesis are an amazing school, um, online school, funded by Elon Musk, actually, who've just released a maths tutor. Okay, using technology from DARPA in America. They've just released a maths tutor, and you can actually do a demo of it. I was, I was on it the other day, learning, uh, learning stuff I'd never, nobody, it was geared towards eight-year-olds, and I was like, nobody ever taught me this in school. It, it's absolutely phenomenal. We're gonna get competition from these types of schools, these types of, of AI um, tools. When I was here a few months ago, I was saying this was coming in the next year or so. It's here already now. This is a case study from my book. Phil lives in Manchester. He's not a teacher. In fact, he's, he works in marketing. He trained ChatGPT to be a maths tutor for his daughter. So whenever she was stuck with her maths, she'd go home. He'd have a conversation in ChatGPT that was pre-trained. And she really, really struggled with her maths. She's just won a maths competition, a national maths competition leave it on this. So last time I was here, um, I said when I was writing the book, I was talking to David Price, and he, he said this, which I thought was really profound. He said, the nature of the dance between humans and machines 
And I just think it's a really nice way to go to, to kind of frame where we're at at the moment. We don't know the next steps, but we have to be the ones that lead this dance. Okay, we have to, we have to get into box three thinking and really innovate the system to keep up. Uh, you can get the book on Amazon. It's called The AI Classroom. It's about 400 pages long. It's, it's jam-packed full of resources. Um, join the, the classroom. We just went over 18,000 um, Facebook uh, members on the, the, the Facebook group, the AI Classroom, uh, which teachers from all over the world sharing things on there. Uh, there's the newsletter as well. Um, check it out. Uh, you can use that QR code on the website at the bottom. It's been lovely to, to be with you this afternoon. And have a fantastic weekend. Thank you.